Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have a house divided campaign for you. Both maps being Conquest, you're getting an overview of the Wheat Fields map right now for Conquest. And then our second map for today is the Rocky Slopes map. Both maps should be a good one. Now an interesting rule about the house divided campaign is called Rush Rules, where teams have to decide what point is closest to them at first and then they'll go to that point. And with that being said, on the Union, we have the 13th Georgia, 8th Ohio, 10th U.S., the 2nd USR, 83rd Pennsylvania, and the 7th Massachusetts. Whereas on the Confederacy, we have Sussie Brigade, which consists of the 5th Florida, 5th North Carolina, and the 1st Maryland. And we have I-Corps, which consists of the Anderson's Brigade and the Walker's Division. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy these two rounds. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have an awesome... Conquest map for you. Two conquest maps from the House Divided campaign event. Our first match is already underway with both sides moving out the cap points. Uh, with that being said, our announcers today are myself as Guardian Eagle with Vastal, and then we have a frontline reporter, Elite Taco. Uh, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing very well today. What about you, Elite Taco? I'm ready to kill some rebs. <laughs> there we go. So, with that being said, let's take it away, Vastel. So, what's the overview of a map here, quickly, just so we can get a sense of what we're looking at? It looks like we have a uh, Cox Push. I think this is Cox Push map. I can't entirely tell, though. I but. do believe it is that, yes. Uh, right now, uh, the, the whole field is, uh, is actually quite small compared to most Conquest maps, it seems. We've got the C point right here, then the, just the other end of the field, the A point, and then over in the next field, B point. Very small for conquest, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would. I would definitely agree with that. It'll be. It's almost. It's a little bigger than the Mama Farmhouse that we saw a while ago. However, it is. It's still relatively small. Looks like one of the Union group has charged out a CSA kill, group at that corner there. Very interesting. We got here. We got. Uh, well, we had a Union line moving just. To into this intersection here, uh, up against a CSA line. Now it's a, a bit of a mess. We've got a, a large contingent of uh, CSA moving up here, so they should be the winners of this. Yes, yes, they are. Indeed, CSA is now capping. The three minute counterattack timer has begun. There we go. Yeah, Union are going to be hard pressed in order to make sure that they don't automatically get thrown out of the game yeah. they reliably do not hold any objective csa strong pr presence on c quite a solid presence on a and well, b's well outside of the grasp of the union of two minutes yeah for sure i uh yeah i mean union only has a couple minutes to really do anything if they were planning on doing anything we'll see if they no, can I, do anything they really don't have any choice. They have to just make a decision right now and go for a point. Most likely, C. C seems like the, the best option for them because A would require them running across an open field. They could go into the corn, which but they've already dedicated themselves to the push on C. So we're going to see how this goes. We've already got some other union. We've got a union unit here, but again, we've got a road what? bump, so to say, of a, of a Confederate company here. Then another two Confederate companies on the point of contention. This doesn't look good for the Union at all. No, it does not. Uh, Elite Taco, what are you seeing right now? How is Union feeling right now? Well, right now, we're, uh, I'm part of the Sharpshooter Regiment, and we're posted up on these rocks here trying to get some pot, pot shots off at the uh, Confederate lines. Moving towards C is the rest of the boys going. Good shot there. Uh, officer just picked. Uh, right, so how, that, are you getting good shots? Uh, I'm suppressed. I'm trying. Well, the Union's gonna need you to get those shots off. Uh, <laughs> this is getting, this is getting <laughs> one minute between, uh, a, a Union comeback or just a straight so up here's the thing. The start of here's the, game. the thing. They need to, Union going down to engaged. Um, they need to uncap and cap a point. They can't just uncap it. I don't know if there's enough time for the Union to do it. No, there simply... There can't be. Unless there's a, a miracle from this company coming over here. Uh, here we've got the 8th Ohio. Uh, mixed in with a bit of a... 
second U.S. Uh, is that they don't have enough US time. Rifles? But what's the flag bearer doing? Why is the flag bearer? Oh, he has not He has no choice. It looks like everyone around. Oh, oh, he's seen that. Even well, then, you gotta go in. You're gonna lose. In yeah, life. there's no choice. So my clock is a little behind too, I think. And so with that being said, I think the round is just about to be over in a couple minutes. Like literally a couple minutes. There's three seconds left. My timer's off by seven seconds. And that's the round. That <laughs> <laughs> well, holy um, crap! I don't think there's much to review for this first round of bar. You meet Taco. What was your view from the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, didn't get much action there. Uh, looks like they just all captured all the points at once, and, uh... I'm in uh, Get some confusion there? I'm not, I'm not sure. That's I don't think anyone on Union, Union knew what was going on there. They just... Wow! Is that a game that ended in... What? Six-minute game? Is that a six-minute round? No, they had to... No... Yeah! <laughs> Holy cow! Well, uh, fantastic work from the Confederacy here. Very impressed. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing else to say there, folks. That's just a, a route and a half for the Union. Yeah, with that being said, we'll see you in the second round. Here we are with our second round on the House Divided campaign. One round already finished very fast. I'm shocked. But with that being said, here we are with our second round. Um, still a bit speechless from the the last round. Uh, somehow, um, don't think this round is going to go the same way as the other one. Um, let's no. see if the Union can do something to regain their honor. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Where are all the points at? Because this is the... Um, oh, what's it, the map called? Ah, uh, yes. This is the... Uh, well, this is Rocky Slopes, but... I forgot the actual map name it's a beautiful map that's yes it sure. is beautiful this uh, map certainly is a lot larger than uh, the previous one so hopefully union uh won't be denied uh the possibility of maneuvering around it looks like union are making sure they get that a point really quickly csa aren't going for us so we know that the game won't be over in six minutes <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure holy cow uh, yeah we've just got a it's gotta a be strong a contingent record. of CSA. Yep, all just around this B point on the picket fence, and then two companies right here at the B point. So looks like they're going for a very, well, at least for an opener, very cohesive uh, grouping. Um, these companies here look like they're uh, looking to approach A now. Uh, as for C, yep, yep, we've got a uh, one of the CSA companies now moving out to C. As for Union, well, we've got. One company over here, led by uh, Captain Rex here. Yeah, all you, uh, companies here seem to be of good strength. So we should be able to see every officer that we see should be at least 12 to 20 men on each of them. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm intrigued about the snake csa took the middle point which i think the middle point is huge on this map because it, the map is kind of linear in a sense if you look to the right side here there is the i think the a point up on the it's kind of like a straight line from all three points csa have the middle point i think csa has a very good start off to this round yeah i think i think what uh they planned it properly they went cohesively made sure that there wasn't a bloodbath over b uh and then, with what they're doing right now, they're staying by the picket fences and just, well, having a leisurely engagement back and forth with the Union here. I know, man. And this is an intense little fucking gunfight. Get the Oh, call to form a line to fire the Union forces over here today. That volley failed to... Oh, a late shot managed to hit one of them. However, it's in formation. And yes, which team took that last point? It looks like the Confederacy did take. Yeah, CSA has just taken C. Indeed. So, with that being said, Confederates have two out of the three points. Now it looks like 
I would guess the most of the Confederate team is going to start moving across the map to take A. A Union group has to be on standby to at least go secure the C point that the Confederacy just took. Otherwise, we might see a repeat of what just happened. Yeah, we've nothing in the CSA over here in the forest, so... Oh yeah, we do have a two Union companies moving up along uh, the road here. They're going to be bumping right into the CSA company. This is going to be interesting. Oh, we've got one of them branching out, oh, making use of their uh, superior maneuverability, it, it seems. Yes. I think, oh. they're, I think they're going for B. Yes, they are. However, oh, be a Confederates B are here. now coming up. Beautiful artillery Ooh. shot. Hitting right on the point there, doing exactly what they're Here supposed they to do. Uh, they have begun Cover, uncapping the point from what I can tell they have. Looks like the point will be uncapped, however, I don't know if they're going to be able to recap it because Confederates are coming up from both sides and they're about to be pinched here. Oh, Actually, they might looks... not even uncap it. Yeah, they managed to I'm stop the decap. That flag barely above the ground as we can see. Well, yeah, we've got... Oh, the CSA group jumped off from the, uh, the highway, well, the road there. Now we've just got all of the companies all converging on this one point. Yeah, it looks like we have more Union trickling into this fight here. We're, yeah, we've got sort of like a traffic jam almost. Or uh, people need to figure out, well, who am I stabbing here? <laughs> you can hear <laughs> yeah, the wonderful the toxicity <laughs> of war rights. You'd love to see it sometimes, I will say. So, oh, we've got a Southern Soldier playing from Robert there. Yes, sir. A, a nice song. A song I may not agree with, but a song that I will not mind listening to. Um, let's see. So, I want to cut over here. It looks like the melee is mostly finished up. Let's cut to our frontline reporter, Elite Taco, here. How's it feel to survive longer than a couple minutes? Feels real good, well. <laughs> real well and good. Um,. We're uh, currently skirmishing uh, on 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 the point, so uh, just I trying to get our good shots off and skedaddle. All right, sweet. Thank you for that. We're going back to overview. We'll get what is happening at A right now because the Confederacy just uncapped that point. Uh, are we about to see two rounds end within like 15 minutes? Nope, there's no Confederates there. It uh, seems that the A point's a desolate wasteland. Yeah, it looks like they had a tiny group come on cap and just run away and hide. If you, uh, do you know you can see the flags above the heads of everyone if you right click? There we well, go. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, learn something new every day before, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing some of those Confederates in the woods that you saw with the little flags above their head on the right, I'm guessing those guys possibly uncap this point or the dead bodies on A. Um, yes, we, we've got a strong Union group moving up here. They're going to make sure that A stays there as so. well. Oh, for sure. I, I wouldn't doubt it in my mind. I would hope that the Confederates, I mean the Union, would move in to secure that position. We've got a big line of CSA moving along here. Most likely going to sit up on this picket... Uh, no, this... What would you even call this? A stone... Uh, road bump? Field uh, I mean, you can call it a road bump. I wouldn't. It's it's a stone wall, if, in technical terms. However, not really though. Kneel down and fire, shoot at A. That's all for enemy. Shoot in front of you. Shoot in front of you. now going down to engage here. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, we did learn this over time. So right now, could the Confederacy is making the Union lose two times whatever the flag ticket deficit is. However, if the Union uncap C, for example, and, e or, and each team has one flag cap, no one's losing tickets. So, if each team has one cap, it's not like they both lose tickets equally from the flags. They, uh, they just neutralize each other out. So right now the Confederates are making the Union lose two times the amount of tickets. Union beginning to cap pay over CSA being very aggressive. Again, the CSA could um, have a huge opportunity to secure that position and possibly win the game. Looks like that uh, immediate push from the CSA there, unfortunately, just got blunted by that extra company moving in. 
However, to the side here, yeah, we see a CSA company moving around, taking the advantage of the high ground over A. Uh, do they intend to snub the Union artillery of uh, firing opportunities on another push? Yeah, yes, here we have it here. More CSA coming in. Is the USA going to be able to get that flag up even for a moment? No, they are denied the cap. Yeah, unfortunately, that, that's a huge play on the uh, the Confederates' part. It's going to keep them capping up too. Actually, are they going to start cap? They're going to start capping. We're about to go into yeah, another kind of cap here. There. Oh! C he has, has been neutralized C, though. C neutralized by the uh, Union. Yeah, Union. See what do we have over here? Staying alive in this game, uncapping C, and now they're capping it. That'll give them a chance. Perfect timing, actually, because Union or the CSA was about to cap A and cap yes, all their that, points. Yes, that, av that avoids a repeat of last game. If the CSA had even a small contingent here to ambush them, that might have really cemented that opportunity to win. But unfortunately, this small group was able to well stop it. Another repeat of last game, only slightly longer <laughs> indeed however it looks like the fi i mean the csa has played this phenomenally so far and i don't see how the union is going to be able to come back i mean as we can see actually wait so yeah a got taken b has been neutralized both happened at the same time so union union fighting back here uh, looks like Union's winning at the B point right now. Uh, they do they have a flag? They do. Yes, they do. And, and we've got more Union coming in and all looping all around from C. Indeed, Union's now going to be having two out of the three points. Maybe we'll see the Union push the Confederacy into counterattack. That we'll is see quite it. the possibility, yeah. There's a lot of Confederates, though, at the A point. Yeah, A point does... Okay, so we've got a big Union group. Uh, well, actually, not that big. It, it's deceiving how wide of well they're spread. But, yeah, this is about 18 men uh, moving up. And then we've, if they get rejoined with uh, the gentlemen inside this house, they should be able to at least take on the group over here. But as for... Oh, we have CSA abandoning the A point. Well, they probably have faith in this company here to hold this. So this is a very important battle to see right here. Yeah, it looks like Union has more men, at least at this charging position. However, Union's actually pretty close. They're bunched up for the charge, which we rarely don't see anymore. I think Union's going to be able to win. The CSA is kind of spread out on that fence line, giving the yes. Union forces there an opportunity to... Wipe them. Yeah, they did. Yes, they did. it's like a wave now going over. Yeah, CSA failed to condense their uh, forces into one place, so at least they could have traded even for even. Now they've given the the Union an opportunity to move further down this line. The CSA artillery, uh, well, people are occupying the artillery. Well, these are again just random uh, skirmishers at this stage. So Union now has a proper foothold and a threat to the A point while CSA are they get trying to reorient themselves for retaking B. Yeah, that group we saw that just won that charge. There's not a lot of CSA over there. They could just make their way, uncap the point and recap. I uh, and cap it and possibly put the Confederacy into counterattack, which I yes, think they're doing right exactly, now. Yeah, that's what they're looking to do. Uh, we just got small amounts of CSA straggling, just in skirmishing formation, so to say. And, well, they're not going to be able to stop. This is still a company that's going to keep increasing it. Looks like the flag bear is a little... Can you, <laughs> Can you kill him, please? Oh, <laughs> there he goes. Well, do we have a... Any CSA that are going to be reacting to this? I don't think... It seems so. What's happening We've at B a... right now? It looks like there is a confederate... Charge champion. Confederates are really sticking together as a team. Confederates now going down to engage. 31 minutes left. 
There's actually a big charge happening here. I think CSA just have more people here. Yeah, CSA making sure that they don't end up having uh, the timer set up on them for counterattack. Appears that way. A is now uncapped. Yeah, excellent timing from both sides constantly to make sure that they don't end up getting into counterattack. I would agree. That Union soldier just ran in there out of line. <laughs> Union, oh, yes, is this is. A, I don't. I get why they're. Uh, B has been uncapped as well. I am intrigued why that charge happened. They were very, very outnumbered, and that allowed the Union to go down to taking losses, or rather, it let the Confederacy knock the Union down to taking losses. Maybe they felt that they, with uh, sh sheer uh, determination, uh, <laughs> they would be able to dislodge the uh, Confederate line. <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh. Because sheer determination ain't gonna help you in a three to one situation. Confederates have kept being now. But yeah, yeah we've got um, a, a Union uh, company moving along here without an officer. Uh, looks like they're planning on maybe setting up around these rocks. But I think the big showdown we're going to see is yeah, CSA forming over here and Union yeah forming another line. They start taking shots at one another. Yeah. Very interesting angle. Oh, CSA not giving a chance for a return volley immediately get off the road. Yeah, they didn't take any casualties of the volley. It was pointless. I've, I've been watching... I've seen Conquest earlier today, and especially, I think, so far with this match, we're seeing Conquest more and more become what it's actually supposed to be. When people first started to play this, from what I was seeing, people were playing it like skirmish. They weren't being aggressive. They weren't running around. They were just slowly, generally just moving in certain towards the point when they're big groups. But now it's just groups going off left and right, running to everywhere to get the points. And I think it's becoming more true to itself, if you want to call it that. Right, so we're seeing Union reinforcing the position around A, but at the same time... It looks like we're getting a mixture of CSA sending, yeah, getting numbers trickling in to help the CSA over here. Not a whole lot. They're still out, yeah, numerically it might be uh, three to two here in favor of the Union. Yeah, for sure. What's happening over at B, B and C? Let's see. So we've got, yeah, Union companies moving around. More going, we've got a lot heading towards A. But we've got a Union contingent that's already boarding around C. This seems like a, a misappropriation of force at this stage. Uh, I mean, Confederates might just have a large force going that way to make sure uh, they can take it. Because you never know what Union force is going to be there. Just a precaution true. more than anything. At the, at the time, they probably didn't realize that, yeah, all these forces oh, were moving. Oh, of here. course. Yeah. With us seeing this in hindsight, yeah, there's no Union there. Why are they taking that big of a force? But... When you're on the field, you don't know. And I think that's the fun part about this, too. Completely different perspectives. That's what I love for the frontline reporters a lot. Like Speaking of frontline reporter, how's it going down there, Lee Taco? Yeah. We're uh, skirmished down these rocks by A, uh, taking pot shots way far away. Are, uh, are a lot of your guys dying down there? Or... Um, I'm detached from the main group with the sharpshooters, so I can't really tell you for the mainland of the 7th Mass, but we're kind of hold here on the stone wall, just, uh, just shooting. Alright, thank you for your report. Back to our overview here. Right now, it looks like we've just got some... Oh, have we got a... What is going on in here? It looks like no one knows what's going on in here. This is a bit of a... Ah, it's just mayhem. Melee, yeah. This typically though, this is going to I got it. Yeah, this is going to go in the favor of the Union here. Due to the fact that well they've got teammates off to the sides firing into the melee. Oh, we've got a flag bear now. Uh, moving up, probably just gonna connect. Could the Union lose their flag bear? Not likely. With the amount of CSA that we've got in that for us. Oh, looks like uh, we've got some volleys going on over here. Oh, very important. The company that moved over to C is now slowly moving through the corn here. Are they going to take another... Yes, yes, they're moving around. They're going to try and 
go around the, to the right hand side. You and you can hit them. Maybe you slap the them. shit out of this uh, union line. Yeah, we'll see how prepared they are for the CSA group. CSA is really... They're not... They look like they have two prongs here pushing in. One down the road, maybe distract the Union, while the other prong is coming behind him. You can see him moving in. It looks oh. very cool with the flags here. Um, and it looks like this fighting is just about to start. Got him down, boys. Got him down. I think the officers uh sort of panicking, realizing I don't have enough shots in my <laughs> There he goes. Get a lament. <laughs> yeah, I said he would say. Uh, Union, I think, got wiped there. They, the CSA had more men. Uh, they got hit from numerous sides. CSA starting to push across the map towards A. You see a lot of that fighting in the woods over A. Uh, is Union still at A over there? Yes, Union is still very strongly nestled around A. We've got a Union line along here. We've got some sharpshooters all along. We've got a Union company sort of taking the the midline rocks, I guess you could call them. Uh, sort of just being a pain in the, the neck for any CSA that would try to, you know, move up here. You have to either show your side or have to, you know, run these guys out of these rocks. Either that or you have to go into the forest, which then you've got another union, uh, but, uh, I guess, contingent right there. But now we're seeing a, a long CSA line that's going to be pushing out of the force, sort of actually disregarding the union and just attacking the one company here. Yeah, they outnumber the union on there, too. We'll see if the union can hold this. However, this will be pivotal, and it might not. If the Confederates can win here... It could knock the Union into counterattack. We'll see, though. Getting a kind of nice overview of this fighting. This close big fighting. CSA has nice position on those rocks. Yes, and at the same time, the, as you can see, the Union company over there is dedicating itself to a fight with a CSA company. So they can't come over to help uh, with the A point right now. No, you can't. Uh, do both. we have any Union companies recognizing the threat at A right now? I, I don't think there's too many far away. They're probably saying something in a Steam chat, though. Wouldn't surprise you. Both sides here. CSA is not charging. I don't know why CSA isn't charging here. They have more men. And speaking of which, there they go. They're slowly trickling in, charging to take that point. We're about to see a uncapped and possibly capped. And we're possibly going to go into a uh, counterattack. Right, do they have a flag barrier? Yes, they do. There we have it. So that A point's going to be going to the CSA, and very we don't soon. Have any union here to stop them? How about B or C? Is any union team trying to be aggressive towards either of the points? Um, it's you know we've got a big CSA wave that collapsed, but oh, this position that they're holding now that they've now abandoned union trickling out of spawn. So hopefully that group goes towards C because they there's no way they're taking B. A is about to be capped. Their closest choice to end the counterattack quickly yeah, is B. We do have the Union here who could threaten B, but realistically they they should trade on well, one to one ish. They'll have only a few men left, and any CSA group that comes to retake uh, B from them. So I guess option for this company is to hold there and wait it out. Yeah, Union's yeah, about to get aggressive here. The so CSA are being getting ready to cap and push this into counter attack. Got to pump it up. Yep, and the counter attack counter has attack. begun. Three minutes the Union has to uncap any of the wonderful points here on this battlefield. I think they will have enough time if the Union goes for C. They can't go for A. B will be a slugfest. Uh, that Confederate group from A now moving out possibly to go towards B. We can see that Union group on the fence line on the left side of our screen, now the right side, pushing oh, towards B. Confederates are there, though. And the Confederacy now going down to taking losses here. I don't think it means much, though. In the grand scheme of things, I don't think the Union's going to be able to win this. Um, yeah, because they're good breaking. Call from this CSA company. Rather than charging into them, like, they're making sure this Union company cannot do anything by charging into them. I'm surprised. Is there any Union group going for um, C right now? 
Yes, there is. It looks like uh, half the company split uh, split off and it's now... Oh, nope, not going for C. Or they need to be going for C right now. Yes. They, like they cannot be right sitting back here. To, to right, yep. to looks like they're filled with a bit of indecisiveness here. How about... How, how's the charge at B going right now? Now they're about to be hit by a CSA group. I, yeah. Confederates are oh, going to be yes, able to hold that yes, for at least another brutal. like 45 seconds. They More Confederates pouring right behind their wall, hunt. Wall, and then behind them, there's it's it's like it's like a press closing in. Yeah, uh, Conf Union's going to get slaughtered here. Let's go back up to the hill. Uh, oh, we do right. have over at a, a a Union line making sure that they could t at least well get out of a uh, counterattack. Uh, as for the Union line here, this. The Union actually traded, I, I wouldn't say pre uh, preferably, but... Oh, there we have it. Last stand. Union going to last stand. Yeah, so regardless of what happens, I don't think the Union can win. Uh, we'll see if they uncap and stop this counterattack and delay the inevitable. Yeah, all the Union soldiers here are now dead, so... Where the rest of the Union team is spawned, are we going to see a lot over at Maine? Let's Last see. Yes. We, we have, have uh, over here at thirteenth. We have our frontline reporter with the flag. My guess is at A. How's it going over there, Elite Taco? Uh, I feel like my death is imminent. Um, <laughs> trying to cap C. I don't know if it'll do any good or not, but uh, we're certainly gonna try to blow you their noses. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, you get it off before the counter attack ends. Not much time left on there. Uh, we're gonna get it. Yo, cover the guy pulling the flag. Have to uncap and recap. A has been uncapped, however, the counterattack still continues. Was there a grace period? Oh, sh no, there's not. Oh. And that is it. That's the game. Wow. Yeah, that is the wow. uh, interesting part about this. So, yeah. Again, second round a lot longer than the first one. However, we still saw the counterattack happen. Union, regardless of the counterattack, got knocked down the last stand, and that really just did it for them. With that being said, uh, Vastal, your thoughts? Um, well, I, I think it's prudent just to talk about the, the second game there, because the first game was, uh, <laughs> wasn't a whole lot that happened, bar Union being told, no, fuck off. Um, in the second round, um, a lot of maneuvering. Great to see it. Uh, lots of just... Well, I guess you could say... Differentials and numbers being shown. Where if one group has ten more numbers than the other, it really swings the balance. Especially in regards to how many end up dying in the end. So, we're seeing, like, union charges where they're, they maybe have only have ten, maybe five sometimes more than uh, another group. But they end up surviving seventeen rather than, say, almost going one-to-one. -one. So, proper usage of uh, force is what really keeps companies alive in this game. All right, gentlemen, I don't know if you know, but we're doing a third game, because I guess the first game did not count. So What? Game game three. Uh, Elite Taco, your thoughts on the second round before we get into round three? Well, I was uh, detached most of the time from the main force, kind of watching the battle unfold like an orchestra. And uh, we did not do too well, so hopefully we can reel it in here, at least get a one on one I guess. Yeah, for sure. Uh, with that being said, we'll see you guys in the third round. And actually, there wasn't a third round. Uh, there was just some miscommunication overall. And with that being said, we'll see you in the post-game interview. Here we are with our post-game vid uh, video. Everyone here is from the CSA. Despite the name tags, we have Doug... John Sue, Murfado, Zapstar, Help, and MJ, the KO, with us tonight. Along with that, we have myself and Vastel with our announcers. And with that being said, we're just going to see the strategy of the CSA tonight. None of the USA representatives would join us tonight. They either have regimental stuff to deal with, which is understandable, or um, we're just a little embarrassed with hey what yo. happened. They I'm sorry, Eli, but you're blind to see the two union reps here. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have Murfado from oh, the 10th no. US and John Su from the 5th US representing the USA tonight. So, Thank with you. that being said, let us ask the CSA their strategy for the first round. What was your original plan and how did you react to the ever-changing battlefield? Also, uh, if it's possible to explain 
uh, the rules that were introduced tonight and how there was issues with that. All right, who wants to take that? You wanted that? You know, sure. So, the rules when it comes to this campaign are, in conquest mode, you are to take the nearest point to your spawn. Unfortunately, tonight's, tonight's two maps both had a vertical line in the center of all of the points. As in, like, there's nothing really closest to you. And when we asked for clarification on what point is the closest point to our spawn, we were told to make the best guess. Now, we did that, and in the first map, we won in four minutes. And if anyone wants to go into detail on that further, I yield to you. It was a very deep battle there. <laughs> very, very deep. <laughs> very deep. MJ, do you have any further to add to that? It was extremely in-depth strategic planning. Um, we all decided we were going to press Shift and W out of spawn. I know, very, very incredible strategy. Never done before. And we got to the point, and then we held the point, and it was kind of amazing. And then we won. It was awesome. I feel cucked out of the first round, to be honest. <laughs> True. Oh, man. I it, was... Was, it, was, it was like blowing your loads too early, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I was left in utter shock, and I was laughing for like five minutes after that. It was I'd like to give the union. So, uh, yeah, the USA perspective, uh, Murfado and John Zhu. Actually, right, yeah. Zhu, you're John Zhu, if you don't mind, I'll... I take this so yeah the, the csa cheated obviously and it's bullshit we're mad about it <laughs> because the union the union plan it was so it was very clear which point was closest to us it was c and we pushed down to it and the whole and then next thing we know the csa has every point in the game off the bat so i mean you know how did you react to try to deal with that though so naturally you know we wanted to stick to the rules so we pushed down to c and we attempted to take it but then we were met by a regiment through the corn and whoever was there and they ended up wiping us out and we couldn't really reform and to hit them because their whole team had all of the points and they were everywhere. So yeah, I mean, we, we kind of feel cheated on the union. We were ready for a good win, but I now, guess GG. One, one thing I will say from the CSA perspective is that the union did actually reform for a main charge at our main unit line, which was unexpected and also foolhardy, in my opinion, because they charged the nearest Confederate line they saw, yeah, and it so... happened to be where most of our men were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our logic there was that, you know, we wanted to play by the rules, right? Because C was still the closest point to us from our spawn, so we came up. That's what we have to do, right? So that's what we did. We had no time to go to the other points, so we wanted to keep it legit within the campaign. So we charged them head on. And we will say I emptied my Lamat twice in that engagement. I was team killed by a friendly on accident and I came back and I killed another nine union people who were charging our position. We hear Listen. Zapstar screams and hit the sound of his Lamat. <laughs> okay. Actually no, you probably hear uh Sevy's ghost. The Sevy's like, ghost when we when we don't have Lamats. Yeah. <laughs> Just possessed by Sevy as my Lamat levels on a Union map. <laughs> I blame the poor Union strategy is because who's the biggest regiment for the Union? The goddamn 10th US. And the harebrained plan was to send half the team over into the corn. Not enough, I say. Not enough. <laughs> Fifth US, Bruh. we just tagged along them. We just tagged along. Like, is this Cavaliers. Bernie Sanders? <laughs> little Cavaliers. That who's that fucking man who sounds like that? Bernie Sanders, right? No, there's an actual player on, oh. on their side. John Zou. Who sounds exactly like that? Mafato, you really dropped the ball here today. Um, Doug, is there anything you wanted to say for the first round? Doug, you there? Well, I think I could speak for Doug when he says, get fucked. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, no, honestly, no. Like, the, it's tough, because like I said, we charged that corn, and I mean, the 5th NC, they just destroyed us. They're a really good group, and if I was in Union, <laughs> I would join them. To be honest. Such That's a just shame me. that we had to join a Union regiment. But I mean, Such everyone, and, you know, everyone did great. So, 
Uh, I, you know, and I do want to uh, take this opportunity to extend my confidence to our opponents on the first map. While we did win that first map in like four minutes, and overall the event was over before 8.45, I don't think that that was a good representation of their capability as regiments in the field. And in fact, I know that they are capable of better because I've seen them do better in the past. And I will send my compliments to all involved. Oh, God shut your yaps, yeah, Zap. Spare me the diatribe. All right, what kind of name <laughs> is Sussy Brigade? That's not even a real brigade. Listen, you're a bunch of fucking jokers and lames. What are you even trying to accomplish? You can't even do nothing. Marilyn hey, stands tall and proud with tonight's victory. John Zoo. So, yeah. With that being said, we'll move on to the second round. Maybe a little longer than the first round. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> CSA, uh, what was your strategy going into the second round? And how did you react to the average change of battlefield? Who wants to take that one? Uh, MJ, do you want to take that? Sure. All right. Um, well, as for the rules, um, we went towards the closest point to us, which happened to be, uh, I think it was A uh, on that map. Um, a and some people went to B. Um, I saw on the uh, after match screen. Uh, yeah. So we ended up hitting both points, and I think there was a like prolonged battle over A. Um, the first people who got to A really couldn't get it first because a whole bunch of Union went there because half the CSA team went to B. I'm pretty sure. Um, I personally uh, went to B myself um, towards the uh, the middle point. Um, because typically in Conquest, as per the rules, you cap that first point up, and then all the battle happens around that middle point. So you want to get everybody stacked around that middle point. Um, because you kind of assume that, hey, the one closest to you is, you know, going to be uncontested. Uh, as per the rules, but they didn't work. Um, so we took all those points, and then we, once we had that middle point, um, we decided, hey, we see a whole bunch of Union moving, I think it was to our north, northwest? And we saw a whole bunch of opportunities to flank around them. There was a cornfield up that hill. There was a big-ass forest um, towards A, from our spawn towards A. A whole bunch of opportunities for tactics. And um, the Union was also fairly spread out across the field. So we were able to pick out units one by one, delete them on their way. And uh, eventually, the people who were at B, like myself, ended up going towards A. We overwhelmed A. And then they decapped C from behind us, which was... Somewhat unexpected, um, but hey, South Mountain rule set doesn't really work. Um, so we uh, ended up having to react to that. It was a lot better uh, battlefield, generally, because there was actually things to react to. We didn't win instantly. Uh, myself, personally, we had multiple times tried to go around different units. So we had a unit uh, towards C, where they were coming down that road. I think you guys might have seen in the, uh, in the replay. We went around the right towards the northwest. I had our men go left. I think it was Sussy Brigade came up atop the hill, and we caught him in a big old pincer. It was amazing. Um, I'm not sure which Sussy Brigade unit it was. I think it was a mix of a couple of them, but it was awesome. That uh, specific instance, it was amazing work with you guys. And I will add that Maryland found itself attached to I Corps an awful lot tonight at Bravo, or as I like to call it, Bravo, where we held the enemy at all costs. And when I call moved off, Maryland remained. And at one point, the Union did charge our position. And I called out an officer's chat. I said, gentlemen, Maryland is being charged by a superior force. I don't Sounded believe like we'll be able to hold this. And then the entirety, How do you know? the entirety of our team arrived and slaughtered the entirety of the Union. Just oh a God. massive bar brawl at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. an honor fighting beside I Corps tonight, as it always is. And MJ, my compliments to your man. Um, with Thank that being know. said, uh, Union perspective for the second round? What do yeah. we got? All right, so let me tell you something. 10th US performed a lot better this round. Uh, I'll tell you that. We were following them up for a little bit. We were able to get A, but the Confederacy, like the last game, God damn it, they cheated. They went for B. A is the closest between both the goddamn teams, and you know that, <laughs> you sons of bitches. And then not only did they take 
Not the closest objective. They went for the farthest objective. See, all the way on the other side of the fucking map. And then, and then it was just all downhill from there. Fucking 10th US held the ground best they could. I know that. And then they, we, we, the 5th US, had to go all the way around and go take back seat. Because you know what? If, this, if those goddamn cheating Johnny Rebs ain't going to play by the rules, then neither are us. That's all I'm going to say. All right? Yeah. Goddamn Johnny Rebs. Damn it, all I could think it was a pun. It's all downhill. The whole map was. Murfado! Yeah, 10th US. As uh, John Zoo said, I think we did fantastic. We pushed that A point after the CSA had a. Did you guys cap it originally? Like off the bat? I can't remember. Or was that us? Uh, no, we, we didn't. Oh, I'm pretty sure, we hit, it. I'm pretty sure <laughs> we, we hit it first, but you guys hit B. And. Because maybe you thought it was closest to you. Jesus. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we took A, and then we moved through the woods afterwards. And then, once again, we were met by the 5th North Carolina. They were on us all night, and they wiped us. That really sucks. <laughs> so then uh, afterwards, we spawned main. You know, we regrouped back to A. We found that our enemy was over the artillery. So we made a charge. We wiped him. We finally got him. And then they wiped us again. GG's. <laughs> Good, game. Good job. Good job, CSA. Good job, CSA. I think oh. uh, we were also there on that push at A. You can tell because we make our little skirmishing line out in the open field and we were shooting. And before we knew it, I believe it was Sussy Brigade. All of Sussy Brigade was behind us screaming like animals. And then we got pincered and died. It's exactly what they are, Johnny Reb. Filthy animals. Eagle, filthy are there any profanity filters I should have in this chat? Um... I mean, probably just not the N word, but no, of course. Hey, not. Can I say the C word? I mean, go right ahead. I, right. I'm not gonna censor people if they say multiple trust. times when I charged out the oh, Union no. lines tonight. Oh, no. I shouted, "Get fucked, you pathetic cunts!" And I stabbed my fucking. Not my actual bayonet, because I didn't have one. I had a little Matt revolver. And I fucking leveled it with their fucking heads. And I pulled the trigger. Don't have your flags pull out before your line's dead. Or if you do, make sure they're actually pulling out in time. Because the amount of flags I killed with my little Matt tonight is outstanding. And I, can, I think all the rest of the officers in the CSA could say that. Don't fucking leave your flags unguarded, or at least give them some guidance, because I saw some of their flags running towards us when they're supposed to be running away. Yeah, That's like, people just don't want to walk you, back. You, it's, a, it's a strategy that we teach in the 10th US. Like, if, <laughs> if, <laughs> hold, on, hold on. Yeah, so there's a reason for that, because if the flag bearer runs towards the enemy, it's like, what are the chances that they will think it's theirs? You know? Oh, that's a good call. Like, good people call. don't think about so, that. So it's like an Alexandrian yeah. strategy where he f he threw his standard over the wall exactly. and, like, then, and then he jumped over himself. And, yeah. like, with that, all of his men have to try and reclaim it, right? <laughs> that's, not, that's what we think. That's what we train. <laughs> the ultimate game of fetch. But for the record, Alexander the Great actually did that in real life. He jumped over the wall and dared his men to try and save his life. And it actually worked, but that's where he was mostly wounded. Sounds like a dirty, no good Johnny Reb tactic, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, lads. <laughs> Fucking face hurts. Oh. oh. I, gentlemen, I, I cannot. I cannot say enough about how tonight I feel like that first map, I feel really cut in that, like, I was ready for, like, a, a drag-out brawl, and it just wasn't. It just wasn't. And that second match was more fair. It was very much more of a contested battlefield. Says the cheetah. <laughs> Says the cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, think, I definitely, uh, I like the second round. I, I love the first round. In HDC, going forward, for the, if we have these rules that we have, I feel like we have to have an overlay of the map and we have to mark out which points exactly we have to go for. So, to forward, what, to forward what Hood had said in the after-action review of tonight's 
CSA victory. He, he had said that on South Mountain maps, they will be using conventional conquest rules, as in, like, you don't have to capture the points in line, because uh. on, on those maps, they are very much just a vertical fucking slit in the middle of both teams. Absolutely. That's so like going no forward, man's land. Exactly. You know, going forward, it'll be conventional conquest rules on South Mountain maps. The rust rules still apply to all other map types. Okay. But he also, and I, I want to reiterate this for our USA representatives, he said tonight's victory stands. Well, well, I think fucking that's bullshit. That. <laughs> I agree. I think it's a step in the right direction, but until Hood nerfs Sussy Brigade, until he drives them all apart, <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to be I, very fair in this campaign. I don't think it's Hood's fault. It's not Hood's fault. It's uh, Sussy Line Network's fault. For, uh, Sussy, Sussy Line, Line Network, indeed. <laughs> Bruh, have I ever had Sussy lose when I went on? I don't I mean, think we've ever lost when you watch. I think you've had... I mean, I'm, wait, what? I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mufato, you got something to say? <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Um, are you double regging? I, I, I think your days out. are numbered. Your I've days are best. numbered. All right, I'm not actually from the 10th US. <gasps> this is a... No. Yep, yep. Wait, <laughs> that's pretty sus. Murfado. That's pretty sus. That's pretty that's sus. sus. Not yeah, Mufato. I'm not Mufato. I am C Mufato. <laughs> no. C Mufato. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> are you from the 11th US? Yes. <laughs> Uh, that sounds kind of, kind of Spanish to me. Are you, you a Johnny Reb? <laughs> oh, it is when it is when uh, South American. Am I right? I'm actually just a big Sussy Brigade fan, even though I'm 10th US. So that's why I know about it. Then why are you in but, the 10th uh, US? Got all the merch. Listen, it's anytime like... you want to join the First Maryland, we are recruiting. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> oh, and speaking of which, I appreciate the patience of Vastel. He was my announcer. He said he had a couple of questions. Do you still have those questions? I, I don't have the questions. Vastel, do you have the <sighs> questions? He was my co-announcer well, tonight. Uh, my first question is uh, for the union reps. Um, <laughs> why did you uh, gentlemen not organize to uh, just make a one huge concerted push the second that you seen counterattack? Well, we did. Problem was... Is that uh, once we pushed down to the C point, it wasn't our whole team for one because you know we weren't really prepared for the CSA to cap all three points consecutively because they cheated. But um, <laughs> we pushed down, we pushed down to C, and we were kind of overwhelmed, right? Which could happen, but the rest of our team was not with us. And then, like like I said, the whole CSA had capped the points. They had reinforced C, and we still wanted to go there. That was our best chance to get close. So we pushed down the wall with not a lot of time left. With our whole team, though, because we rallied up. And, and, then we may, were, and then we were wiped in detail. If, if I may add, Vestal, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Lamat revolvers are fantastic. And let me tell you, when I... Another cheat. Another cheat. <laughs> Union doesn't get Lamat revolvers. <laughs> when, when I'm only, able... Only when they're pussies. Charging only detail, Johnny Webb pussies use Lamat. When they're charging in detail, they're not penetrating their lines... I can make an awful lot of kills with a Lamat revolver from the rear line. And it's so fucking beautiful watching flag bearer after flag bearer and bayonets carrying man die before he even reaches our glorious impenetrable line. You want to be a real man? Use a Remington. <laughs> use a Remington. Use yeah. an American revolver, not that French shit. Right? <laughs> I, uh, I do have a second question again for the Union. Uh, the second one is uh, regarding the second round. We've seen, I believe, uh, in Recording Eagle, two different uh, Union pushes against uh, the B point, where the Union simply were not in a position to charge. They were outnumbered nearly three to one. But we've seen two times where Union right. companies Again, ran that, right in. That is the benefit of the biased HDC campaign events, where the Union oh, constantly, okay. it's just like six seven small little union regiments like me right and then maybe you get one big one like the 10th us here and then again it's two huge huge groups like i -Corps. what are we supposed to do about that we're trying to coordinate but it's like freaking little chickens talking with the head cut off <laughs> and and to bottom that that's kind of true what though I, 
What, well, what I will yes, say... That, that, that could be true, but wouldn't it be prudent of any officer to realize that I am charging into a, a three-to-one situation? And fit you as charged. We charged valiantly, and we died it was valiantly. It was the tenth U.S. The tenth U.S. just sat there on A, and they thumped their chest and said, "Damn it, I ain't going, I ain't going in." It, <laughs> it is not ours the reason, <laughs> gentlemen. It is not ours the reason where and why. It is but ours to do and die. <laughs> they thumped their chest and said, "What a brilliant charge it was." What a brilliant All those charge. rich men with their tall hats and gold watch bands thump their chests and talk about what a brave charge. <laughs> oh. What I, what I will say is predominantly at B was I Corps. And I Corps held bravely oh, against was, old comers. It was very fun I'll just you. watching the lines come down and kitch. I'll tell you, though, like, I'm pretty minced. sure 10th US actually stayed on A the whole time. Because 5th and C in 10th US, literally... You're sure like, you don't even know where your own regiment is, Mafaro? Yeah, I mean, is, yeah, we, we, just kept, we just kept going over to the A point. This is what fighting. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We were fighting 5th <laughs> This North is what Carolina. I gotta work with here. It's not my fault. <laughs> and I can find out where I am. Listen, I, I stuck towards i on that B, that B point, and we held it against our comers. And they tried time and time again to charge right into our barrels. And those fucking... Pathetic cunts could not take the field. Superior arms, shot and steel, I Corps, Maryland, Sussy Brigade. That's all there is. How come Maryland we, is separate from Sussy? It's not. Yeah, what the hell is that? Uh, one last question I say I would have. I had is, to add uh, it in the last bit. And this one's for <laughs> the CSA members. <laughs> uh, with the second round, there was. I, it seems all four companies moved around uh, B, the B point and were there for at least for the first three minutes. Was that just uh, to ensure that you took that B point in case the Union charged it and thought that it was their closest point as well? Or was that just part of the rules that you all went to B? <laughs> this goes quiet. <laughs> oh, I missed the question. What was the question? <laughs> it was like an essay. I was apologizing to uh, Murfato there. <laughs> you know what? I don't need an answer. No, no, I'm curious. I, I want to know. Come on. Um, I will say again. At the start of uh, the second round, uh, all four companies of the CSA were either to the uh, to the picket fence to the uh, to the side of it or on the B point. Was that? Just because of the rules, or did you fear that the Union were also going to go to the B-point because of the confusion with the rules? Well, we figured, and this, again, like, I have a very mixed perspective on that engagement because I was very much trying to lead Maryland and Maryland alone towards the main battle plan. What I will say is that the B-point very much is the closest to both spots in that map. It very much is, indisputably so, the closest. And... We were ready for the Union to try and charge that position, and when they did not materialize, it was a very, mu very much disappointment, honestly. Because I'm sitting there, and I'm watching as there's, there's nothing in front of us. Wait, and that, I was wait, very that confused. brings me a question. Can you continue there for a moment? I, I was just very confused. Like, where on earth are they going? So we held short. But go ahead, for still. What, what's the second question? So the question is, if... If B is clearly the closest point for both sides, then I have a question for you, 5th fifth, uh, fifth U.S. Captain Johnson. Why did you not go to the closest point if that was the rules? Because when Johnny Reb started cheating, then you know what? All bets are off. <laughs> See, what you're saying is the USA <laughs> cheated too. So what I'm, say what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is... No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is that if Johnny Reb ain't gonna play fair, why... What's the expectation that we should play fair? I mean, Jesus Christ, we're fucking ten men. You know what I mean? We gotta do what we gotta do. And, and for the record, like, I've never walked the field in an empty server and tried to dictate which point exactly was the closest. They're very much in a line, like I said at the beginning of this interview. And we made the best judgment call over what's closest. I think both sides did that. And both sides had different perspectives over which was closest. Oh to yeah. Well, now, you just happen to decide. You just happen to, to decide the point closest to you is the uh, the point you got to go to, huh? <laughs> yeah. Is and, that and, the and, ruler? Yeah. 
To be fair, we did ask for even draft though, games, even and we were told that. And what I do want to add, uh, what, reiterate rather, is once again, going forward, these maps will be played conventionally, as in without the Rosh rule set. For that very reason, because every single point can be interpreted to be the closest to your spot. So, going forward, these, this, this game will be played differently by the Union. Very likely not differently by the CSA, because we played it very fucking well. But, hey, yo. gentlemen, Mafato, I will ask you to let me speak, sir. <laughs> gentlemen, it, it was a glorious victory for the CSA tonight, and I do compliment our opponent's performance. All right, I have no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I I personally I, I like the South Mountain maps just because of like they're in a line and they're kind of like they are very like wide battle. but not very tall and so it kind of almost feels like a hell at loose offensive not exactly but it's more like that than what the Antita maps offer and what I will say in addition to that is I agree with you I like it I think that they they play much more like a real battle does in that. You, your opponent will try and flank you. They will try and utilize the terrain. They will do their best to try and usurp your position, which you may have a strong point on, and try and get around that strong point and flank it, okay? It allows that sort of tactics, as opposed to just that inline, which, again, this is my opinion, the inline bullshit, where, like, it turns into trench warfare, World War One style, okay? Nobody fought like that in the era of musketry. Okay, nobody fucking made it so that you had to take positions in line like that. I'm not the only one among Maryland who is very critical of their rush rule sets. And I will say that insisting that you capture points in line is foolish because all that does is drag down the gameplay and turn it into bayonet charge after bayonet charge. And tonight we didn't see that because, because there was a lot of confusion over which point was the closest. Um, well, yeah. Uh, is there any more comments or questions by anyone before we call it off for a night? I got a question. Yes. Hey, Zappy, what's a Yankee like you doing with Johnny Rep? <laughs> what's a Yankee like me doing with Johnny Rep? I fight for a just cause, John Zoo. Uh, just cars. Anything else? If there's not, I have, I have more to add to that. Go, go right ahead. Gentlemen, First Maryland was represented on both sides in the war. And therefore, we are a regiment with very much a split personality. We're more than comfortable in wearing blue or grey. Because First MD existed on both sides. Gentlemen, one last thing I'd like to add is that 6th Georgia, led by, I believe led by, and correct me if I'm wrong, Goondog, in my IMs as you're messaging me, led by Goondog, outstanding regiment to fight beside. We're not that good to fight against the dog water. <laughs> Absolute garbage. No, Bring no, Django back. Where's fight. Texas at? It's awful to fight against them because, listen, it's fucking terrible when you charge an enemy who outnumbers you and you somehow lose, okay? Listen, Wait, I win what? those battles, typically. I win <laughs> outnumbered, typically. And when I charge fucking Goondog out, I get fucking slaughtered. What happens? What should is we, that? Should we bring him in? I think so. He's we'll there listening. Oh, He'd be very happy to pop in here. You can just hear the sigh. <laughs> yes. You know, they always make a moment of silence to, you know, bring up the tension before we start. <laughs> he, he went oh, back down. No. no. There it is. No, I shifted him. Oh, Come did back you? up. Good dog. Good dog. I'm sorry. Please forgive me for I have sinned. My brother. You know, there's always a moment of silence to build up the tension. No one's going to be silent for you, you Georgia bastard. Dude, okay. When Zapsor was just talking, I thought I was going to war. And we're doing like this last meeting before charging. <laughs> Pick a charge. <laughs> you ready, lads? You know, Mike Ruddy, I want those bayonets fixed. We're going over the top here in just a few moments. Wait for the whistle. 
there's just first Maryland has they definitely have an advantage, an unfair advantage over everybody, and that's Zap Star's speeches. Oh, I agree. Come Look, on. I'm uh, you know you know oh, play yeah. with Zap Star. And listen to his speeches. I'm about to come through the computer and break my freaking monitor because I want to charge everybody. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an unfair advantage because I, I agree there, uh, Murfado and uh, John Zoo. Thank you. Uh, unfair. Completely unfair. He's cheating. I'm sorry your own men don't want to listen to you, Goondog. <laughs> <laughs> This is well, if, we, if, we all, if we all talk like this, all right, maybe they'll listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm you need to be, you. No, no, you be right. a little quieter. A little quieter. Oh, you're right. You're right. All right, like this. All right. First Maryland. Over the top, lads. Let's go. <laughs> well, exactly. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know. Zap started making a speech. But all my guys just go follow him. He's like, oh, no. okay, guys. <laughs> let's go this way. Whatever. Even if we're on the other team. Listen. Yeah, exactly. Keep going. Dog. Uh, it was it was many events ago. It, as Eagle, if, if you do approve of me talking about this, go right ahead. Many events ago, I can't remember that fucking map name, but you lads had taken a rock position. We were shelling the fuck out of it, but it wasn't enough. And you lads had two lines set up, and Sussy Brigade repeatedly was charging that position. But your second line would come in, and it would somehow secure the field. I remember hearing you. Shouting to your men to hold their positions, and then I would fucking start shouting the Maryland to crush, <laughs> and it was terrible. It was terrible because your men they rallied to your voice just as mine do to mine, and it ended up being this horrific brawl. <laughs> Those are the best ones, though. There's the best one. Usually, I'm the first one to die after that, but you know what? The, the, just getting them all together that's that's great. That's great. Men, no, they'll, they'll the carry old... me. The old Maryland days, the bell had this thing where they would. Sh- he he was convinced that the enemy would shoot me first. Yeah, they, that was their like objective to shoot the loudest voices in the line. <laughs> yep, and they would fucking kill me. That happens still to this day. And now that I have a fucking revolver in my hand, it makes it easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I I also agree with you about you know uh, about the eliteness of the Lamat. That's the only pistol I use. Oh, it better be. I refuse to go union. <laughs> if there's a union regiment, if there's a union regiment that has a lamet, I may go union. Is there one? No. <laughs> I don't think there is. Come on. I don't think there is. We've been going for I think almost 40, 40 minutes now. Ain't no oh, way. I I I've, oh, been, I've been recording for 45 minutes. This is crazy. We're going well, to ending at the usual event time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so that's true. Like that. All right, all right guys. So how did the uh round go for you guys? Let's start with the first round, CSA. What was your? Re- <laughs> oh no! We're restarting. No, it's a loop. The endless cycle. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. It's an in short, quick summary. CSA cheated, and that's how they won. Uh, All quick right. summary. Quick summary. I killed at least fifteen men with my Lamat in the first round, despite it being only fucking four minutes. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> we I probably guess. got like both teams probably got like two kills. Uh, I remember hearing the left is getting charged and then immediately someone spy it. That's nah, fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <It's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't need help. Yeah, yeah we're yeah, we rushing over out. there full three. Where the fuck are they? Shall I move on to the second map? <laughs> I will yes. say it was a fucking awesome shooting them up as they came down that hill. When they came towards that cornfield on the left hand side, we were oh, yeah. just to your right. Like all walkers was just to your right uh, of that cornfield on that big old stone wall. And they came down there like a whole, fuck, a whole bunch of grass, just running down. Like had to we- uproot the weeds. Um, it was pretty, uh, oh. pretty awesome. CSA perspective, second map. Uh, what I will say is, it felt like the Union had one game plan, and they just kept running it. The whole thing, legit. It felt like it felt like one unit was told to ta- take A, and they just kept trying the whole time. And it felt like there were some units assigned to B, and they just kept going. They kept running into our guns, running into our bayonets, and they got slaughtered every they fucking got, time. They got minced on B. They couldn't even run if they wanted. No, they, it was great, too. So there, was, there were moments where I was bringing Maryland forward to reinforce Bravo, and I saw, I saw Icor up there. And, like, I see as we're about halfway across the field that you've already won the battle. And then we're just mopping them up. And I'm like, 
Oh, we really need it here. <laughs> I'm thinking yeah. that to myself. Well, we need someone to take pictures. Well, yeah. I don't, yes. <laughs> don't want to be looked at as a union sip, but I've been where the union's been before, where I've thrown everything at a certain place, and it just doesn't fucking work. Just like everything works against you, just one of them maps. <laughs> I've had it where I threw everything in the kitchen sink at something, and it just didn't, just does what? not work. But Coon Dog, well, I think you'll agree with me here. When you say, let's just go ahead and just American football, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I played right tackle both sides of the ball in football, in high school, rather. Okay. So I can speak to this, right? And you play in the same exact play over and over again, and it's not fucking working. You're going to change your strategy, am I right? Well, I'm trying to be nice for the viewers. Or, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I, I, I was trying You're to. Try, I was trying to. You know, you yeah, yeah. Being yeah. It, was, nice it would change up pretty quick. That, listen, <laughs> but, let me be controversial. But we're being extremely kind. Yes, we are. <laughs> I'm trying Guys, to. we're not making fun of anyone tonight. We're unbiased here, right? Oh, completely. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why we got. That's what I'd say. We, that's why we have U.S. representatives here with us tonight. Yeah, we've got Mafado and John Zoo. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I was union, <laughs> if I was union, this would this would be my name. <laughs> <laughs> which I am. So, not a bad uh, name. Which I am. I, I personally believe the second map broke down into a lack of communication between the regiments over there. I, of yeah. course, was not amongst them. But <laughs> the way they just kept playing the same exact little playbook, it didn't work for the well, first three times. Why keep doing it? What are you well, doing? Yeah, and also, you got to look. They had what? Like. Seven Six. different units. Six that's got to be. Yeah, that, yeah that's got to be hard. No, I know, well, I know it's hard sometimes. Yeah, well, especially you get one or two that just don't do anything. Is the equivalent try to convince your old men and then some random people you find? Just well, the be objective. Like, oh, I'm gonna go die over there today. The objective of coordination, right, is to be convincing one man who's in charge of that unit to follow you, and he has to convince his man, right? And if he can't, then he's not really in charge, <laughs> is he? No. I mean, that's... I know that's very critical, and I apologize to our union individuals Listen, who are yeah. listening to this. But, gentlemen, it's not hard to coordinate multiple regiments towards one unified goal. You can do it. You just have to have some force behind you. Some charisma. Perhaps a bit. And you can achieve victory. So what he's saying is kidnap Zapstar, right? <laughs> no. And then it just, it just make him do speeches. Yeah. Next, next thing you know, I, I fucking got no. twenty three orc tags on or something ridiculous. No, they they trap you in <laughs> a room. He's the next right? union rep. They trap you in a room. You put they put a mic in front of you, and they're like, "Say, tell your men to retreat." <laughs> and then the, the twenty That's how they get dollars. The twenty yeah. New York psyops. Oh uh, yeah, the psyops. The psyops unit from the twentieth has enough sound bites of Zapstar to make a convincing speech on the spot. <laughs> they could, they, they could actually do. do. They That's could... the worst part. They actually do. <laughs> well, this this post game, if anyone would spend the time getting all the Zapstar quotes out of this, could easily too. I mean, Zapstar has said retreat at least two times. Okay, I just, I just want the, the other post game. Oh right? man, what if he grabbed? Yeah, grabbed that retreat and used it like in game. I'm just going to. I'm just. I just need to give all the uh, goon dog. I just need all the Zapstar goon dog comments, the compliments only, and uh, just use those all the time. <laughs> just save them to a soundboard. We'll play exactly. Them, uh, and just compliment. Them. You know what? I'm having a bad day. I just come in, turn my computer on, just listen to that. Back back in the old Maryland days, there were multiple men who had soundboards of me. They play it in the middle of battle, and I actually asked them to delete it because it was <laughs> fucking me up. Because like I oh, hear my own voice. I'd hear my own voice like saying shit that I haven't said yet, and I'm like, "Fuck! I was about to say that." <laughs> Being Overall, interrupted by yourself at that point. I hate that. It's like getting cut by yourself. It doesn't make any sense, but it happened. <laughs> but I feel uh, like that's a little bit better. Ultimately, you're, in at class. Least you're saying it regardless. Yeah. Well, I mean, the twentieth says that I they they play that you know the twentieth New York is superior superior in the field once again all, that over and over again. The old guard bite. Yeah. yeah, the old guard bite. Which, by the way, he betrayed the old guard. Absolutely. <gasps> no. Yeah. Don't 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 betray the old guard. He he betrayed. Well, now I, we actually play against him on Mondays now. Funny. What? So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, fifth. Yeah. Fifth NC does, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'll join that line. Yeah, I'll yeah, start yeah. shouting crap. But I'll be there. anyway. 
Gentlemen, to sum up tonight, it was a glorious, glorious event, if short. And I hope the next one is a bit longer. Yeah. Uh, and with that being said, I think, uh, yeah, we've we've gone on for a long time. It's been very fun listening to this. Uh, with that being said, everyone in this VC, their socials will be in the description below. If they so, please go check them out. All the regiments that participate in this video will also be in the description. Go join them. Um, yeah, please like, comment, share, subscribe for more. Uh, join our Discord if you want to be an anchor or your high command and want to do special, be a special guest announcer. We'd love to have you. That being said, have a good night. See you guys later. Can I can I add one thing? Yeah, go right ahead. Cue the music.